Merry Christmas, my name is Maarten and I'm proud to introduce a new release of Bertopic. My ambition is to make it the one-stop shop for topic modeling. And with this new release, I think we're a big step closer in achieving just that. In this tutorial, we will go through some of its major features like zero-shot topic modeling, merging pre-trained models and more support for large language models. As always, let's get started. As always, we'll start with the Google Colab Notebook. We'll go through the tutorial and you can just follow along with the link in the description. Let's start at the beginning. What exactly is BERT Topic and why should you care? Well, BERT Topic is a modular framework that allows you to build essentially your own topic model however you want. As a default, BERT Topic uses SBERT to create the embeddings, reduces those to five dimensions with UMAP, clusters them to find semantically similar documents, and use several weighting schemes to extract representations of those clusters, which we call topics. Now, this is a very generic pipeline, but if you want to use another model, so uh, k-means instead of HTTP scan, that's perfectly fine. You can basically plug and play with the models that are out there. If you want to use ChatGPT on top of CTF-IDF, that's perfectly fine. And you can even create many, many representations. And because of this modular framework, the idea is to create a one-stop shop for topic modeling, because if one model doesn't work, there are plenty others to try out. As a result of this modular structure, Bertopic can do quite a lot of things within the topic modeling space. Uh, things like hierarchical topic modeling, dynamic topic modeling, supervised multimodal, but during this tutorial, we will introduce zero-shot topic modeling to you and a couple of other methods that are interesting. Now, to do so, we will start by installing a number of packages that we're going to use. Uh, of course, BERT topic and datasets to extract the data that we're interested in. But as we will see later on, we will also need Llama CPP Python to download and use some of the more interesting quantized large language models within BERT topic. Now, let's start at the beginning. The very first major feature, zero-shot topic modeling. It's a very flexible technique that allows you to essentially use and find predefined topics. The one thing you should do as a user is to create some topic labels. So let's say that you know there's a topic in your documents about clustering and there's a topic about topic modeling. Now, then it's up to the user to create the labels of those and make sure there are you know, descriptive because we're going to run them through an embedding model. And we're going to do the same thing with the documents. So you get embeddings for both the documents and the topic labels. And what we're then going to do is going to match the topics to each document. And we're going to use cosine similarity for that to find out which document um, is related to which topic and whether it actually relates to a predefined topic. What then happens is two models are being created. One is a so-called manual BERT topic model, which is a fully supervised BERT topic model because we assigned topics already to document, but there are also some documents for which we could not find any topics. Now, and for those documents, we're gonna create a entirely new BERT topic model because they're not matching with either the topic topic modeling or the topic clustering. We're merging these two BERT topic models together into a single large model, one that contains both the zero shot topics and one that contains you know, anything that's discovered newly. So for example, there might be a topic about large language models, and obviously that doesn't really fit within clustering or topic modeling. And this is a very flexible technique because it allows you to essentially say, okay, I want only documents to be assigned to actual predefined topics. I don't want to discover new topics, that's fine. But you can also be a little bit more lenient in, um, in that regard and make sure it finds new topics. Now, as always, the code for that is relatively straightforward. We'll start by selecting a subsample of a number of abstracts from archive. And we're doing that as uh, our main data that we're going to use throughout this example. And we define a number of topics that we are very confident are in our documents. So clustering and topic modeling, we know those are in there. And you know, as an interesting one, let's also add large language models to this list. In BERT topic, what we're then doing 
is we're assigning that to the parameter zero shot topic list, but that by itself is not sufficient. We also need to decide when, so with which, with which cosine similarity will a topic be assigned to a document. And that allows you to basically choose how strict you are in assigning topics to certain documents. We can run this, it might take a while, um, but after that, what you will have are a number of um, topics that are defined by our predefined list and the number of topics that were newly found. Now that the model is done training, we can view the topics that were created. We're running a small piece of code here, topic model.getTopicOnInfo, which shows us all topics that are being created. And as you can see, we have our zero shot topics here. We have found 281 documents about clustering, 82 about topic modeling, and 34 about large language models. The interesting thing is it has found a lot of other topics that would not fit with our initial predefined topics. And there's a huge benefit to this because al although we know there are topics about clustering and large language models, we might not have found a topic about graph networks by using just this technique. There's even here a topic about chess and AI. And that's not a topic that I would have thought about before. And by using zero shot topic modeling, we can easily assign the topics that we know are in there and we can define them ourselves beforehand, but we can simultaneously find new topics. So a very flexible technique that allows you to do many interesting things with it. So that's the very first major feature of this new release. The second major feature is model merging. I've already shown you a little bit of a preview in the zero shot topic modeling task, but model merging allows for a lot of creative use cases. It works a little bit as follows. Let's say we have created two per topic models and the blue one has two topics. It found a topic called clustering and a topic called large language models. We also have a yellow bird topic model. Again, we find a topic clustering, but we also found a topic called topic model. Now these two bird topic models are different, but they have some similarities. They both contain a topic called clustering. So in a way it makes sense to combine them because there's some, a little bit of overlap in there. Now with this new feature in bird topic, we can essentially merge them. And what happens is during merging, it tries to find topics that are very similar to one another. And if they're similar to one another, they will be merged. If a topic, so for instance, large language models is totally unique, then it will be kept as its original representation. And by doing this, we're not just blindly stacking two models together. We're trying to hopefully cleverly merge them into a single representation. So it often happens when you're doing, for example, incremental learning, learning over time and with constantly new data, you will consistently find topics uh, that you've already found before. And it doesn't really make sense to continue to add them on top of your original model. You want to merge them with the presentations that you already have. And that's essentially what we're doing here with this model merging. And there are two use cases that work tremendously well for this. It's federated learning and incremental learning. And with federated learning, essentially what we're doing is we have data at different sites, at different locations, that we don't want to share with one another for privacy reasons, security, what have you. And with federated learning, uh, we can keep the data at those stage stages, as those stages. And what the only thing we have to do is we have to extract the models and merge them. And that way they can learn from one another. So that's one benefit, but another is incremental learning. And that is something I want to show you here. In incremental learning, we're consistently finding new data that we want to train on. So if you have tickets, for example, that are coming in each month in large quantities, you might want to find out, okay, which new topics do we find in this new batch of data? Because if there's a new issue that appears, you want to know that as fast as possible. Now, and that's essentially what we're going to do here. We're going to mimic a incremental learning situation. And to do that, 
we load our data as we done before. But this time we split our data into chunks of 5,000 documents. And we're gonna assume that each chunk is new data coming in. It can be daily, weekly, monthly, doesn't really matter, but it's new data that's coming in. We'll start with the base model. Typically you already have some data laying around. Uh, you train your Bertopic model on that. And that's the model you want to continuously update. So we train that. And then we iteratively, iteratively add small and newly trained models to this base model. So this new chunk of data that is coming in, we're creating a new model for that, a new Bertopic model. And when we have created that new model, what we can do is we can merge both the base model that we have, as well as the new model to get our updated model and to discover, did we find any new topics in here? So here's a little bit short piece of code uh, that prints out which topics are newly found. And that's amazing. <laughs> At least I'm, qu I'm quite biased, of course, because you know it's my package. But the great thing about a method like this is that you can continuously find out new information from data instead of having to retrain your Bertopic model and uh, try to match topics to one another. That's a very difficult and tricky process. With this, you can keep your topics as they were. The only thing it's doing, adding new topics and potentially merging them into old topics, but it doesn't necessarily change the representation if you don't want to. Now, after that, we update the base model uh, to be in line with the updated model. And that's essentially it. We run this piece of code. Now that the model is done training, we can see which topics were newly created. At each iteration, it shows us new topics it has found. Here's a topic about forecasting, specifically stock forecasting, it seems. And in the next iteration, it finds a new topic about fairness and discrimination. Eventually, it goes into finding uh, adversarial attacks. This way, we can continuously find new topics and easily discover them, notice them, identify them, and eventually do something about them. Because if you're getting a lot of new tickets about certain issues, this method will help you find these new topics and then potentially do something with that. It's a very straightforward technique. It works relatively easy and it allows you, compared to the partial fit of Bird Topic, to use UMAP and HDB scan instead of models that uh, need to support some sort of online or incremental learning. So a very flexible technique that allows you to do to do many different things. Now, the next step in our process is more large language model support. And, and what does this exactly mean? Well, one major feature of this more large language model support is document truncation. When you pass any document to a large language model, it might be too large for that large language model to handle. For that, we introduced document truncation. And what it essentially means is that we can split up the document into pieces and truncate it at a certain size. And that size depends on the way we, we tokenize or split up that document. So here's a graph that illustrates the many ways you can split up your document in Bird Topic. Let's say you want to have a document length of 100. Well, a document length means different things depending on your tokenizing uh, background of a uh, backend. So in the case of splitting into characters, a value of 100 will essentially mean that a document will have at most 100 characters. But if we split it up into white spaces, it will be essentially 100 words. White spaces will not always work for any language. So not all uh, words in any language will be separated by white spaces. So you can also have a vectorizer or a callable like TikToken to split up your document into pieces, into tokens. And then you can use the document length to essentially decide how large of the document can be at a maximum. Now in practice, that looks a bit, little bit like follows. Let's say we have this prompt that we're using in Bird Topic. And it starts with, I have a topic, it should be a topic that contains the following documents and then the number of documents. And eventually it asks, based on the above information, can you give a short label of the topic? 
Now, this documents part can be especially long if you have documents that you know are pages long. That happens. With the truncation step, we can say, okay, I only want the document to have a certain size. Because as you can imagine, if you have documents that exceed certain pages, uh, it's nice, there's a lot of information, but it really doesn't need to be that long. The core of a document is really often found at the beginning, the first few sentences. So what we can do is we can truncate all of these documents to a smaller size and then give it to the large language model. So what we typically want to do is give the large language model as much information as possible, right? But there is also a thing uh, where you give it too much information so that it doesn't really know what to handle. And if you have too large of documents, that sometimes messes with the output it creates. So be specific in what you want to achieve, but don't be too long. And document truncation helps in that respect. So that's the first feature of more large language model support. The second is Alarma CPP, which is a very well-known package used for loading and using large language models, not just from scratch, or at least the large models, but also the quantized or compressed versions of these large language models. It's an amazing package and I'm happy it's now integrated within Bertopic. And using it is really straightforward. You import it from Bertopic uh, dot representation and you search for the model locally. So we have downloaded the model before. If you check at the beginning, we downloaded a GGUF version. That's a, a compressed, a quantized version of Sever. And we're also showing here an example of what it means to truncate a document. We're using the internal vectorizer here and we're stating that the document cannot be longer than 50 tokens. And with a vectorizer, that generally means 50 words. Uh, it doesn't split it up into subwords. Sub that's something that's being used more often for um, the internal tokenizing mechanisms of large language models. But here, it's nothing more than defining the tokenizer and the document length. And these two variables can be now found within any large language model representation of per topic. And then the only thing we have to do is run the model, fit it, and we have our representation. And that is it. Those were some of the major features of the new release of Bertopic. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have any feedback regarding any of them, or if something isn't clear, let me know in the comments. If you have any issues, go to the Bertopic repository and leave a comment there. As always, thank you, and I'll see you next time.